The gravity-resisted test for hip flexion begins with the patient seated, thighs supported, and legs hanging over the edge. The patient flexes their hip to end range, maintaining neutral rotation, and holds that position against the examiner's downward resistance. Lift your leg off the table. Don't let me push it down. Relax. Grade 2 hip flexion is evaluated in side lying, with the limb to be tested uppermost. The trunk is neutrally aligned and the lower limb may be flexed for stability. The patient flexes the supported hip. The knee is permitted to flex to reduce hamstring tension. The therapist supports the test limb and prevents the pelvis and trunk from rolling. Bring your knee up toward your chest. Grades 1 and 0 are assessed supine, with the test limb supported by the examiner under the calf. The patient attempts to flex the hip. The examiner's free hand palpates the muscle just distal to the inguinal ligament on the medial side of the sartorius. Palpation of the iliopsoas can be challenging. First, identify the location of the sartorius by placing the heel of the subject's test limb on the contralateral shin and palpating for the sartorius. Once the sartorius is located, move the palpating hand medially to locate the iliopsoas. Try to bring your knee up to your nose and relax. Assessment of sartorius function begins with the patient seated. They may use their arms for support as necessary. The patient flexes, abducts, and externally rotates the hip while also flexing their knee. The therapist uses one hand at the knee to resist hip flexion and abduction, while the other hand, placed at the ankle, resists hip external rotation and knee flexion. I'm going to show you the position to put your leg in. You're going to come up and out, and I'll ask you to hold it. So go ahead and move your leg up and out, and hold it. Don't let me move your leg or straighten your knee. And go back. Gravity-minimized tests for the sartorius are performed supine with the heel of the test limb placed on the contralateral shin. The therapist supports the limb as necessary to maintain alignment as the patient attempts to slide the test heel upward along the shin to the knee. The sartorius can be palpated on the medial side of the thigh where the muscle crosses the femur or near the origin of the muscle just below the ASIS. Try to slide your heel up to your knee and relax. The gravity resisted test for hip extension begins with the patient prone unless the patient has a hip flexion contracture. The patient extends their hip through the entire available range of motion. The clinician stabilizes the pelvis with one hand 
and provides downward resistance just above the ankle with the other hand. Alternatively, resistance can be applied to the posterior thigh just above the knee. This is a less demanding test. Lift your leg off the table as high as you can without bending your knee. Hold. And relax. Assessment of grade 2 hip extension is performed sideline with the test limb uppermost. The examiner provides support for the limb and the knee is maintained straight. The opposite hand is placed over the pelvis to maintain alignment of the pelvis and hip. The patient extends their hip through full range. Bring your leg back toward me, keep your knee straight. Relax. The test to differentiate between grades 1 and 0 is performed prone. As the patient attempts to extend the hip or squeeze the buttocks together, the therapist palpates for the hamstrings at the ischial tuberosity. The gluteus maximus is palpated over the center of the buttocks. Contraction of this muscle will result in narrowing of the gluteal crease. Try to lift your leg from the table. And relax. The gravity-resisted test for the gluteus maximus begins with the patient prone with the knee flexed to 90 degrees, unless the patient has a hip flexion contracture. The patient extends their hip through the available range while maintaining knee flexion. Downward resistance is applied just above the knee, while the contralateral hand stabilizes the pelvis. Lift your leg, keeping your knee bent. Hold and relax. The grade 2 test used to isolate gluteus maximus strength begins with the patient sideline with the test limb uppermost. The therapist supports the flexed knee and uses their other hand to stabilize the pelvis. The patient extends their hip with the test knee flexed. The available range is less with the test knee flexed because of tension in the rectus femoris. Move your leg back toward me. Relax. The test for differentiating between grade 1 and grade 0 gluteus maximus strength is identical to the grade 1 and 0 tests for aggregate hip extension. The patient is prone and attempts to extend the hip or squeeze the buttocks together while the therapist palpates the gluteus maximus. When hip flexor tightness is present, the gravity-resisted test for hip extension is performed in standing with the hips flexed and the torso prone on the table. The patient extends the hip through available range. The therapist provides downward resistance just above the knee while also stabilizing the pelvis. Keeping the knee in extension will test all hip extensor muscles. With the knee flexed, the isolated gluteus maximus will be evaluated. Lift your foot off the floor as high as you can. Hold. Don't let me push you down. And relax. Bend your knee. 
Lift your thigh as high as you can. Hold. And relax. When a patient cannot lie prone and hip extension is expected to be above grade 2, use the supine hip extension test. The patient lies supine with her heels off the table and arms folded across their trunk. The therapist cups both hands under the heel. The patient presses the limb downward toward the table attempting to maintain full extension as the therapist raises the limb 24 to 36 inches from the table. The opposite limb almost always rises involuntarily. This should not be considered an aberrant test. Grades are assigned based on the patient's ability to maintain full extension as well as the resistance felt by the examiner. Don't let me lift your leg from the table. Keep your hip locked tight and your whole body rigid as a board. Relax. The gravity-resisted test for hip abduction is conducted with the patient side-lying with the test limb uppermost. The limb should be slightly extended beyond midline with the pelvis rotated slightly forward. The patient abducts their hip through the complete available range without flexing or rotating it in either direction. Resistance is given in a straight downward direction at either the knee or at the ankle if a longer lever arm is desired. Lift your leg up in the air, hold it, don't let me push it down. And relax. The gravity minimized test for hip abduction is performed supine. The therapist supports the test limb just enough to decrease friction. This hand offers no resistance, nor should it be used to offer assistance to the movement. The patient abducts the hip through the available range while the therapist palpates the gluteus medius just proximal to the greater trochanter. Bring your leg out to the side. Keep your kneecap pointing to the ceiling. And relax. The gravity-resisted test for tensor fascia lati begins in side-lying. The test limb should be uppermost and flexed to 45 degrees. The patient abducts the hip through approximately 30 degrees of motion. Downward resistance is given just proximal to the knee, while the other hand stabilizes the pelvis. Lift your leg and hold it. Don't let me push it down. and relax. The gravity minimized test for tensor fascia lati begins in long sitting. The therapist supports the test limb under the ankle to reduce friction as the patient moves. 
the patient abducts their hip through 30 degrees of range or whatever is possible. The therapist palpates tensor fasciae latae on the proximal anterior lateral thigh, where it inserts into the iliotibial band or at the insertion into the lateral aspect of the knee. Bring your leg out to the side and relax. The gravity-resisted test for hip adduction begins in sideline with the test limb lowermost. The upper limb is abducted approximately 25 degrees and supported by the therapist. The patient adducts their lower hip until the limb contacts the upper one. Downward resistance is applied on the medial surface of the thigh, just proximal to the knee. Lift our bottom leg up towards your top leg, hold it, don't let me push it down, and relax. The gravity minimized test for hip adduction is performed supine, with a non-test limb positioned in some abduction to prevent interference with the motion of the test limb. The therapist slightly elevates the test limb from the table to decrease friction as the limb moves. The patient adducts the hip without rotation while the therapist palpates the adductor mass on the inner aspect of the proximal thigh. To begin the gravity-resisted test for hip external rotation, the patient is seated. The patient's hip is externally rotated. The patient holds this position while the therapist grasps the leg at the ankle and knee and attempts to internally rotate the hip. Hold here. Don't let me turn your leg out. and relax. The gravity minimized test is conducted supine. The test limb is internally rotated. The patient attempts to externally rotate the hip while the clinician ensures that the pelvis remains neutrally aligned on the support surface. The external rotator muscles, except for the gluteus maximus, are not palpable. Try to roll your leg out and relax. The gravity resisted test for hip internal rotation begins with a patient seated. The patient's hip is fully internally rotated. The patient holds this position while the therapist grasps the leg at the ankle and knee and attempts to externally rotate the hip. And don't let me turn your leg in. Hold it. And relax. The gravity minimized test is conducted supine. The test limb is externally rotated. The patient attempts to internally rotate the hip. Gluteus medius can be palpated proximal to the greater trochanter. Tensor fascia lati is palpated over the anterolateral hip below the ASIS. Roll your leg in toward the other.
and relax. There are three basic hamstring muscle tests for grades five and four. The examiner should test first for the aggregate of the three hamstring muscles with the foot in midline. The aggregate gravity-resisted test for hamstrings begins prone with the limbs straight and the toes hanging over the edge of the table. The patient flexes the knee to approximately 90 degrees while maintaining the leg in neutral rotation. Outward resistance is applied just above the ankle. Bend your knee, hold it, don't let me straighten it, and relax. To begin the gravity-resisted test for the medial hamstrings, the knee is flexed to less than 90 degrees and the leg is internally rotated. The patient maintains the leg in flexion and internal rotation against the resistance of the clinician. Bend your knee. Hold it, don't let me straighten it. And relax. To begin the gravity-resisted test for the lateral hamstrings, the knee is flexed to less than 90 degrees and the leg is externally rotated. The patient maintains the leg in flexion and external rotation against the resistance of the clinician. Bend your knee. Hold it. Don't let me straighten it. And relax. The grade two test of the hamstrings is performed side-lying with the test limb uppermost and supported by the therapist. The patient flexes the knee through their available range of motion. The hamstring muscle test for grades one and zero is performed prone with the knee partially flexed and supported at the ankle by the therapist. The patient attempts to flex the knee while the therapist palpates both the medial and lateral hamstring tendons just above the posterior knee. Try to bend your knee. And relax. Try to bend your knee. Relax. Try to bend your knee. Relax. The quadriceps femoris muscles are assessed together as the separate heads cannot be isolated during manual muscle testing. The straight leg raising range dictates the optimal position for the seated knee extension test and informs the examiner of the available range within the patient's comfort zone for side-lying tests. The gravity-resisted test for the quadriceps femoris begins with the patient seated, trunk leaning backward to relieve hamstring tension, and hands on the table for stability. A pad under the distal thigh or the therapist's hand maintains a horizontal femur. The patient extends the knee through the available range of motion but not beyond zero degrees. Full knee extension during the resisted portion of the test should be avoided, as this may permit the knee to lock into position. Downward resistance is applied just above the ankle. Straighten your knee, bend it a little, 
Hold it. Don't let me bend it. And relax. The grade 2 test for the quadriceps femoris begins in sideline with the test limb uppermost and the knee flexed approximately 90 degrees. The patient extends their knee through the available range of motion. Prevent internal rotation of the hip as this can allow the knee to fall into extension. Straighten your knee. Relax. The grade 1 and 0 knee extension test is performed supine. As the patient attempts knee extension, the therapist palpates the quadriceps tendon just above the knee with the tendon held gently between the thumb and fingers. The patellar tendon can also be palpated below the knee. Alternatively, the therapist places a hand under the slightly flexed test knee and the patient tries to extend the knee. Push the back of your knee down into the table. Relax. Tighten again. Relax. Tighten. Relax. The gravity-resisted test for the gastrocnemius and soleus begins with a patient standing. The patient may use up to two fingers on a table or other surface to assist with balance. While maintaining the knee fully extended, the patient raises the heel from the floor consecutively, or a single time for grade two, through the full range of plantar flexion. Stand on your right leg, go up on your tiptoes, now down, repeat this 25 times. The patient is prone with their feet hanging off the end of the table for the gravity minimized test of the gastrocnemius and soleus. The patient plantar flexes their ankle through available range of motion. The therapist resists plantar flexion by applying pressure over the metatarsal heads. For grades 1 and 0, activity of the gastrocnemius and soleus can be monitored through tension in the Achilles tendon just above the calcaneus. The muscle bellies of the two muscles also may be palpated. Point your toes down like a ballet dancer. Hold, don't let me push. Relax. Point your toes down like a ballet dancer, like this. Go ahead. And relax. Point your toes down like a ballet dancer. And relax. Try again. Relax. Try again. And relax.
Flexing the knee during standing results in a 70% decrease in gastrocnemius activity. Thus, when the goal is to primarily assess strength of the soleus, the knee is flexed to put slack on the gastrocnemius, which crosses the knee joint. During the gravity-resisted soleus test, the patient stands on the limb to be assessed with the knee slightly flexed. One or two fingers can be used to assist with balance. The patient raises the heel from the floor through the full range of plantar flexion while maintaining a flexed knee. To begin the gravity minimized test for the soleus, the patient is prone with their knee flexed to 90 degrees. The patient attempts to plantar flex their ankle while the knee is maintained in flexion. Downward resistance is given over the forefoot. Point your toes toward the ceiling. Hold. Don't let me push down. Relax. When compared to the plantar flexion posture achieved using the gastrocnemius and soleus, substitution by the flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorum longus results in the forefoot plantar flexing, but incomplete movement of the calcaneus. Substitution by the peroneus longus and peroneus brevis pulls the foot into eversion. In contrast, tibialis posterior substitution inverts the foot. Tibialis anterior strength is assessed with a patient either seated or supine. The knee should be flexed to ensure that the gastrocnemius is on slack and does not limit dorsiflexion range. The patient dorsiflexes the ankle and inverts the foot, keeping the toes relaxed. Resistance is provided over the dorsal medial aspect of the foot. The tendon of the tibialis anterior can be palpated on the anterior and medial aspect of the ankle at about the level of the malleoli. The belly of the muscle is located just lateral to the shin. Bring your foot up and in. Hold it. Don't let me push it down. Relax. Use of the extensor hallucis longus and extensor digitorum longus to assist with foot dorsiflexion results in the toes extending. Normally, the toes are not involved in the test movement. Tibialis posterior strength is assessed with the patient either seated or supine with the ankle in slight plantar flexion. The patient inverts the foot through the available range. Resistance is provided over the medial side of the foot at the level of the metatarsal heads. Resistance is directed toward eversion and slight dorsiflexion. The tendon of the tibialis posterior is palpated between the medial malleolus and the navicular bone, or above the malleolus. As toe flexor activity can be used to compensate for a weak tibialis posterior, it is important to keep the toes relaxed during the test.
Foot eversion is assessed either seated or supine with the ankle in neutral. The patient everts the foot with depression of the first metatarsal head and some plantar flexion. The therapist provides resistance over the dorsal lateral border of the forefoot in a direction toward inversion and slight dorsiflexion. Peroneus longus can be palpated on the lateral leg, just below the head of the fibula. The tendon can be felt posterior to the lateral malleolus, behind the tendon of the peroneus brevis. To isolate the peroneus longus, resistance is provided against the plantar surface of the head of the first metatarsal in a direction toward inversion and dorsiflexion. The belly of the peroneus brevis can be palpated laterally over the distal fibula. The tendon can be palpated as it traverses forward from behind the lateral malleolus, proximal to the base of the fifth metatarsal. Turn your foot down and out. Hold it. Don't let me push it in. And relax. Flexor hallucis brevis is tested either seated or supine with the ankle neutral. The therapist uses one hand to stabilize the foot. Flexion of the great toe is resisted by the index finger of the other hand, which is placed beneath the proximal phalanx. Bend your big toe over my finger. Okay, relax. This time you want to keep your big toe straight. Bend your toe over my finger again, hold it, and don't let me straighten it. Relax. The metatarsal phalangeal toe flexors are tested either seated or supine with the ankle neutral. The therapist uses one hand to stabilize the foot. The patient flexes the lateral four toes at the metatarsal phalangeal joints, keeping the interphalangeal joints neutral. The therapist provides resistance to metatarsal phalangeal joint flexion of the lateral four toes. Bend your toes over my thumb. Hold. Don't let me straighten. And relax. The test for DIP and PIP flexion of the hallux and lesser toes begins with a patient seated or supine. The therapist grasps the foot and applies resistance to flexion of either the great toe or the lesser toes. Resistance is applied under the middle phalanges for the IP test and the distal phalanges for the DIP test. Bend your toes down. Hold. Don't let me push up. Relax. Assessment of toe MP and IP extension starts with the patient seated or supine and the ankle neutral. When resisting great toe extension, force is applied over the dorsal surface of either the distal or middle phalanx. The extensor hallucis longus tendon can be palpated or observed as it runs along the dorsum of the first metatarsal. When assessing the lateral toes, resistance is applied over the dorsal surface of the proximal phalanges. 
the extensor digitorum longus tendons can be palpated or observed over the dorsum of the metatarsals. Extensor digitorum brevis is palpated on the dorsolateral foot just in front of the malleolus. Raise your big toe up. Hold. Don't let me pull down. And relax. Okay. Raise your toes up. Hold. Don't let me pull down. And relax. I'm going to have you bring your foot out to the side. Go ahead and bring your foot out to the side. And relax. Again, try to bring your foot out to the side. Relax. Don't let me lift your leg from the table. Keep your legs straight and your body stiff as a board. And relax. Go ahead and straighten your knee. Relax a little. Hold here and don't let me push your leg down. and relax. Hold your leg here. Don't let me pull your leg in. And relax. Pull your right foot up and in. And relax. Bring your foot straight up to your nose. Relax. Point your toes. Push, 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 and relax. And again, point your toes. Push, 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 more. Push, push, relax. And again, point your toes. Push, 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 and relax. Go ahead and bring your foot up and in and relax. 